Is the recording sound? Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, one, once again. Uh, so we have scheduled this session, uh, especially to let you know about uh, what are the best CAT model practices you can follow. And uh, uh, there are a few updates uh, we did in the rule book, uh, and we are about to launch in a day or two. So before proceeding, uh, I just wanted to congratulate all of you uh, for clearing the phase one and jumping into the phase two round. So phase one was only 20% of uh, the event what we have planned. So now the 80% of the work is remaining. So the reason of scheduling this uh, uh, session is just to let you know about like what are the importance of CAD which we were asking like your CAD model should be detailed and uh, the way you are modeling the same way you have to build the actual implement. Then what are the pain areas uh, which you will be experiencing if you don't have the detailed CAD model. So there are some minute, minute details uh, and there are some other utility of CAD model which uh, we'll try to explain. So, so let's start with some of the rule book points first. So I think you are already aware of this. So we have provided you the customized tray requirement because many teams were having issue uh, like uh, with this much dense tray, it is hard to pick individual sapling out of the tree. So we have provided some leverage to the teams that they can use their own customized tree. They should be having the like, certain requirement of those customized tree, which we have mentioned clearly over here as well and in the rule book also. So make sure to go through every points properly before starting to manufacture your own customized tree. So I won't go point by point, uh, like what all things you should be taking care, of, but I'll encourage all of you to go through the rule book uh, as soon as it got released. So if you're having, or you are opting for the customized tray, like you have both the option, uh, you can go with the tray, which the Tifan organizing committee will provide you, or you can bring your own four customized tray with yourself. So what we'll do, we'll give you our tray of sapling and you can transfer those sapling into your customized tray and then put it over the implement. So one more clarification, like if you're putting this tray over the implement, that doesn't count in the, into the manual intervention. So even if this tree is caught over in between and you are putting the new tray, that's okay. That won't be counting in the manual intervention. But yeah, it should be capable of carrying at least two working tray and two backup tray. Like four tray should be there on the implement. So <clears throat> there is one more important addition uh, which we are recommending. We are not making it mandatory, but if I was in your place, then definitely I'll I would have opt for this uh, carrier. So based on this year theme, you know that none of the implements are self-propelled. Everyone, every implement is going to be driven by the tractor. So for the ease of the motion of your implement, what you can do, you can uh, make some customizable tray that we called it as implement ca carrier. So what will uh, what it will do, it will ease your uh, transportation. Like even if you are in the college, what you can do, you can simply put your implement over this and you can roam around. Like if you want to go to the other machine building area, bending area. So in this way, you can just move easily if you have this type of implement carrier. So there are certain requirement which we have mentioned like some of the implement they are already having some tires let's say two tires are already there so what they can do they can build their implement carrier in such a way they can add one more tire and it can also act as a steering tire with any one pulling rod 
if there are already three or four wheels in the implement, then what you just need to do, you just need to pull it so you can have any pull bar with you. Make sure that the supporting points which you are providing, it should be on the primary structure or it should be capable of taking the weight of the implement properly. It, it shouldn't be happening like you have put the implement over the carrier and while you are pulling or pushing it, you are carrier is bending or it is damaging your implement. So just uh, be aware of that. And we are not uh, like uh, confining you with any of the material. Make sure the material you are using should be able to bear the weight of the implement. So there are a few points which uh, you have to take care. And the last and important point is it should be made in such a way that even the tractor wants to put the implement over the implement carrier then it should be easily able to do so what is the benefit of that like every time the tractor is going to pick the implement from that carrier and if they want to put it back you can place your carrier and ask the tractor operator to put it on the carrier itself so that you can move it easily like even in the main event if you are required to move your implement say to the building area or to the workshop, it will be easy for you to take that implement because we'll be providing you the tractors, but that will basically for the event purpose, not for the transportation purpose. So if any team is having emergency, any breakdown happen in transportation or during the trial and you want to repair it, you want to take it to the workshop or any fabrication area, dedicated fabrication area. So at that time you may suffer some time loss so to avoid that you should build it and it's very easy like it it is not that costly and once your implement is ready you can plan this implement carrier accordingly so just the reference image uh, you don't need to make it like this it's just a simple that there should be supporting point and some tires which will be taking the weight of the implement and the front tire like it if it is two or one it should be act as a steering wheel and there should be some pull rod like this and if your implement is placed over here then like if the tractor is coming from the back side then the tractor hitch mechanism height should be same like it should not happen that uh, those hitch points are not uh, not matching the height of the tractor hitch points so while making this implement just uh, make sure that the height is same then uh, the other changes or no, this addition was already there but we have uh, defined it precisely that what type of tie down points uh, you should have on the primary structure so the purpose of this tie down point is to is during the transportation basically like even in your college if you want to pick up your implement and place it on the truck transportation truck then you will be needing some points where you can your implement and will easily be able to lift it so basically for that purpose only uh, we are asking for this three hitch point and uh, this three tie down point and it is mandatory to have like it should be in such a way that we are easily able to like provide the hook into this hole and able to lift it so there are certain criteria which uh, minimum criteria which you need to follow and we are mentioning all these details in the rule book so you can either need it through some sheet metal laser cut part and weld it over the primary structure or you can bend some rod and weld it over the structure so anything is okay so there is one d parameter over here which is unrestricted it is basically depend on the uh, weld length you will be needing and that weld length will basically uh, decided by the weight of your implement say if your weight is, uh, implement weight is 400 kg then you might need a bigger weld length to support that weight and if your uh, implement weight is hardly 100 and 150 kg then you may not need a bigger weld length so accordingly you can decide this then but the stop area it should be clean the way we are mentioning over here then uh, there are some added instruction uh, in few of the section that uh, 
from the tractor the only power you can take is through pto take off unit not any other unit no electrical harness no hydraulic connection no pneumatic connection will be there from the tractor and while operating there should not be anything on the tractor which is related to the implement so whatever operation you have to do you have to do it on the implement itself the only connection will either be the hitch point three hitch point or the power take off unit none other connection will be there from the tractor then uh, last year uh, we allowed uh, i think five to six member on the field during the field trial but this year we are limiting those members to three so all the team members can be present there outside the field and they can have a look but standing outside like uh, we'll be drawing a line over there and only three members will be there with the implement two of them can stand either side of the implement and one will be sitting with the operator so in case if they want to give operator some command about braking stopping or adjusting the speed so it will be easy to communicate with the driver but make sure those three members should have proper safety kit with them it includes safety shoes safety goggles and safety cap and gloves in your hand so you may need to arrange this safety kit the members which we are which you guys are planning to send in the field during the main event so uh, Praveen I'm not able to see the other screen so uh, just let me know if we have any question and students if you are getting any question or having any doubt please uh, paste it into the chat window we'll take it from there Praveen are you there Vignesh, are you there? Yes, now Aisha gave me to un access to unmute myself. <laughs> okay. Yes, so I think there's nothing the... nothing till now. You can carry carry on. Okay, fine. Yes. So then uh we have added these scores like the events which we will be conducting on the uh, on those three days so they are sales and marketing cost innovation design presentation build quality so every event is having some weightage and the major point you can see is for the field evaluation like how your implement is actually performing So I can see Team Brainiac have one question. Like if they have their own driver, so no, you are not allowed to drive uh, the tractors uh, in the field. So operator, a predefined operator will be there with every tractor, and he's the only one operating. You can only suggest him that how you want it to drive or get the tractor driven. Yes, then the CAD uh, model detailing and utility so what i'll do uh, i don't go much in theory and uh, one more thing that uh, before going into this if we have any question related to the previous points you can ask oh yes i'm not seeing anything in the chat window <laughs> okay so yes uh, so i won't be going into the detail how you should be doing the cad modeling i know you have already qualified the phase one and you guys are very well aware of the cad software which you are using but there are a few things which uh, our team would like to express that in phase one we have just seen the images like we don't know how detailed model was that definitely we asked the question and the teams uh, who were not ready with their CAD models completely we have given them the suggestion with the warning that uh, how much time they are having to spend on the CAD modeling and the importance of CAD modeling 
is the visual representation like whatever you are model you should be able to replicate that model as is in reality to do that that CAD model should be detailed like it should be having every part assembly buildment even the hardware is like where you want to put the bolts where you want to provide the welding and it should have proper subsystems assigned that yeah this is the pickup system and this pickup system is having this number of parts this number of filament this number of assembly and any of the group can independently work on that assembly and put it over the main structure and the utility one more utility which we'll be talking about is uh, how you can generate the prints out of the CAD model and the DXF file like which you can use uh, to give it to the any supplier like who is having the CNC machine and uh, hydraulic bending machine. So once you provided that DXF and print, you will get the exact sheet metal part. But the only thing is you need to detail that out properly. So I'll go. I'll jump over the CAD model uh, software. Like I'll be using Creo Parametric right now and i'll show you some of the things directly over the software so i hardly get two to three hours to prepare this but i think that should be sufficient for you guys so how we decide this like whether uh if i talk on this image so how should we deciding that this should be one piece or it should be a combination of multiple piece so definitely you can see that four uh, rectangular or square pipes or tubes are there. So in reality, we want to make it. There are certain ways like we can make it out of the sheet metal, which can be laser cut and bend to make this area. Other ways we can use the standard tube, but we need four pieces of tube. So accordingly in CAD model also we will be using that four pieces. Now whether you keep it bolted or welded so in CAD model itself you have to define it properly so your CAD model model tree should be such in such a way so there will be one top level assembly under which you will be having various sub assemblies like say first sub assembly is uh, of some of the parts containing part one and two you can do this uh, naming standard naming like say instead of part one what you can do <clears throat> you can type define your say id and uh, you can say it is the primary structure so it could be ps and in primary structure it is tube 01 or it is completely dependent on you guys because this naming convention will ease a lot of work for you so whenever you click this part you will have all the details so the only thing is this model tree should be defined very well so this is weld amendments there will be some weld which will be required to connect these two three parts which are there in the sub assembly then there could be multiple weldment in this top level assembly then this uh not only weldment there could be bolted assembly as well like there are three parts which are uh, getting bolted onto each other so you can make that bolted bolted assembly separate so over here you are seeing so what i did i actually prepared it in a single part this is the solid model single part like this is not a separate tire or this above resting point or this steering wheel or tie rod. I literally extruded it in one part, everything. And I think that is the same way most of the team did just to show us the CAD model here. Yeah, look, we have worked on the CAD model and this is the design which we will be manufacturing. But trust me guys, this is useless. Like, if you are trying to get some data out of it, like say, uh, this is the rod, uh which will be needing then you take the dimension easily and you fabricate it but there are other connections also like there should be some hub for the tire some hardware some welding will be there some tolerances will be there so there are n number of things which uh 
you will see in the detailed CAD model only. Now you see this, you can see like every member is different the way we are going to manufacture it. So it's just a suggestion that try to make your CAD model as detailed as possible. If you are about to order the raw material or anything, so I'll suggest just hold your horses. I know you guys are very excited to build the machine, but make sure before building, ask your CAD team whether they are confident enough to order this raw material. Oh, it looks like you're sharing videos or animation. No, I am not sharing any videos or animation right now. I'm just sharing the screen. So let's jump to this part first. So here you can see it is a simple part. So I made it out of sheet metal. So why sheet metal? Because my requirement was such that uh, I should be fabricate it in a sheet metal. So whenever uh, you are going to give DXF or some files for the laser cutting, uh, like I suggest that you should only be using the sheet metal. Uh, so if you go in new, so there are certain uh, tabs you will be seeing over here. So for now, for you guys only this, three tabs are more than enough, part, assembly and drawing. So in part, what option you will get solid and sheet metal. Solid is for any part like uh, solid parts which you will be building or you want to give it for the CNC machining or you, sh uh, you are uh, fabricating any shaft, then you should be de uh, doing it in the solid. In sheet metal, whatsoever material uh, you are fabricating, which you have to give out to the laser cutting machine and then to the bending machine. So that type of part you should be modeling it in the sheet metal. So this one I have prepared it into the sheet metal. So whatever bend I wanted to have the hole for mounting everything I am having over here. So I know the purpose of this sheet metal. Uh, it is going to get bolted on this primary structure. So I'll fabricate and this requirement is completely driven by your design. Like I wanted a bearing shaft a hole over here and a shaft will pass through this. So how, what is the dimension of that bearing? What type of shaft I'll be using? I'll first assemble all of that. Then I'll finalize this part. Then as soon as this part is finalized, what I'll do? <clears throat> I'll create a flat pattern. So I won't be uh, stopping or showing you how you like where you should be clicking and how you should be doing this session is recorded you can refer this session later on but every software is having different way of doing it but what you want to uh, what you should be doing that only we are covering so uh, what i'll do i have one command like i'll create an instant of the flat pattern say create now it is created and we can see it in the family table that this flat pattern is created. Now how you can use this flat pattern. Uh, first let me create one. View over here quickly. See front. Save. Okay. And now I'll go to drawing because uh, whenever your part is ready, uh, we'll create a drawing. So we can make it generated or I can give it name as shaft or shaft support plate. See, okay. Oh, there should not be any spacing. So you can use any of the template. Uh, that's not my concern. So here you will uh, have a screen. You can have any format. So I'm using the John Deere software. So it is having the standard format. Uh, but every software come with some standard this drawing templates. So what I'll do, uh, I'll pull that model up. 
over here i have created one front i'll apply it now you can see this part over here so it's too big for the drawing let's say i'll scale it to 0.5 so now you will see uh, the front view of that but from here what you can do you can prepare the drawing just uh, just to know mm, it's a projection view so it's the side view this is the front view and there are various other views which you can take to define the overall size and from where you want to bend now i'll keep it aside then i'll call one more can give it front <clears throat> uh, i'll scale it again let's say 0.25 now we have to make it flat so what we'll do we'll replace it with the flat flat So you will see now this is the sheet metal part and this is the profile for the laser cut cnc machine which they can use the scaling will come by default because you want it to fabricate on one is to one scale so the same part which like if you are not having the uh, cnc facility in your college what you can do you can prepare all the sheet metal part prepare their uh, drawings properly prepare their DXF properly and you can provide that to the out uh, any supplier or fabricator if he is having or uh, if they are having any CNC laser cut or bending machine now the only important details which uh, will be needing over here is like from where we have to bend this Oh, what I'll do, I'll show that axis. That these are the two axes uh, where I have to apply the bend. So what you can do, you can simply attach a note with it that this is the bend. And uh, from the ma model, you should be knowing that this is bend up or down. So for that, you can simply see the model, or you can take a isometric view. So this is blue and the outer one is green line. And you are seeing this blue, then this is the bend up. So both of that is going to bend up. So this with bend up, you may need to give this bend allowance also. So not all the supplier is asking for this bend allowance, but it's better to give. So it gives some idea that how much allowances on the bend radius you should be having. So in this way, you can prepare all the details and provide it to the supplier that, yeah, uh, this is the sheet metal part, how you are going to laser cut it and how you are going to bend it. So in this way, you will get the exact model. It might be having some variation, but that will hardly be 0.02 or 0.01 mm. That is like not even noticeable. So we usually use geometric dimension and tolerancing, but for you, for the small model, I think that is not needed. But if someone knows, that's good. So as soon as this is done, uh, you can also provide some dimension, outer dimension that, yeah, this is somewhat, say, 600 mm, and you can simply make them like, yeah, this is 600 mm. Then you can uh, measure this dimension also and provide it. So. You can provide all the details. So many tutorials are, are already available on the YouTube. I am not going to spend much time on it. And what you will do, you can simply go save as and export it into the DXF format. Click on export. So wherever you want to save it, let's say on the desktop, I'll save it. And the same way, if you have prepared the drawing on the same sheet, you can go and simply export. So you can give this drawing to the supplier with that all the details, like what are the dimension, what are the material in the material block you can mention. And this is the DXF on this scale, which they can easily cut. So this is the important thing which you can utilize to ease up your manufacturing. 
so i'll say like if you're spending three hours or four hours on the cad model detailing i promise that you will definitely be saving 30 to 40 hours of that rework in actual so i again request like uh whomsoever uh cad modeler you're having in the team ask them to be very specific uh with the cad details until unless you have all the data with you all the dimension all the cad models don't go on ordering the raw material so uh that is the one thing with the sheet metal now let's say uh i have taken this primary assembly in which i am having all the parts but uh in this primary structure i am having uh, in this uh, main assembly i am having primary and secondary structure so i made this cad model uh, hardly in one or two hour so let's say so if you want to fabricate the main frame so there are uh, various ways which i have already mentioned so you can either have the sheet metal uh, application like this part if i want to fabricate i can make it into the sheet metal simply and then uh, i can generate the flat pattern and provide the dxf so it's something like this flat pattern generated the way i have already shown but what happened in sheet metal as soon as you bend it you will see some bulging out of material on the bend so you have to be very careful like you are deciding that your primary structure outer dimension should be of 1600 mm by 800 mm so it is not necessary that you will be needing two 1600 and two 800 mm of this channel because as soon as you start modeling in detail what happened whenever you are going to assemble it you will see some interference on the edges now what you need to do you need to remove this so let's say uh, this is the model uh, let me pick it so what i'll do i'll unbend it and provide the cut and again i'll bend it back so now you can see this is very clear nothing is interfering and this two will be the longer one and this two shorter one will sandwich properly between them so this is the beauty of sheet metal like in cad model only you can control this detail and then you can go into the welding and provide the welds wherever you want it and with this like if you are doing it properly uh, you can provide as many as holes which are needed uh, in the laser cut drawing only so as soon as i'll do the flat pattern of this in laser cut i'll get this holes also on exact location now my primary structure is completed uh, with the holes now what i'll do uh, i'll work on another structure which is the secondary structure of my implement then i'll prepare a separate assembly of secondary structure because this way i am having only six connection point on the primary structure so you will see over here that these are the number of pipes or plate i'll be using to make a secondary structure so from here you will get the exact dimension that yeah this is the pipe we have to cut and you can simply make a drawing or simply measure it from here and there so if you are extruding this you can simply extrude it in the solid part but make sure you are providing proper radius because the standard tube they are having this radius equivalent to thickness inner radius equivalent to thickness and outer radius equivalent to twice of thickness otherwise if you are like not providing this proper round then you will see something like this in the cad model and it is not that reliable because what happened you will miss this flange uh, or this radius every time you are going to weld it or manufacture it because you cannot use this area for putting out the hole or uh, for the welding so this is the ideal situation not this so you can then simply provide the hole and then you can take this over the main structure and simply bolt it so in the CAD model you like i mentioned earlier you should have proper bolts like wherever you wanted to do the bolting then again so this all primary structure and secondary structure 
they are always the combination of some structural member whether can be a round tubes square tubes uh, or solid shaft or sheet metal components which are bended and welded together or any of the casting so make sure how you are deciding that whether it is going to be the individual part which should fall directly under this or whether it should be a sub assembly whose parts fall under this sub assembly which we are making so it's completely depend on the sequence of assembly what you will be doing and uh, if you want to service any part let's say i don't want my primary structure for the service of the shaft uh, which are there so what i'll do i'll simply remove it from this six bolt and i'll have sufficient area to access the shaft or any of the drives which we are having in between so these are the few things uh, which you should be knowing like before ordering for the raw material or before even starting of thinking manufacturing so uh if we have any question i think i am open to questions it seems like uh, everyone knows very well how to do manufacturing that's good like we'll see most of the working prototype so last year what happened uh, many of the teams they were not uh, very detailed with their cad model so what was happening uh, like in the event we have actually observed the teams which were not having the detailed cad model they were not even able to prepare their implement properly and they were not even able to perform so that's the learning of last year which we wanted to share with you now there are some videos which uh, you might be seeing over the youtube again and again like how the cnc laser cut work so it is something like this so laser cut uh, simply runs over the sheet metal like whatever thickness you have provided uh, that dxf file we feed it into the program of the cnc and it starts cutting and if you are providing all your sheet metal part in bulk uh, it will be cheaper for you to get it done and it will be done quickly but make sure if you are outsourcing this uh, laser cut and all the operation ask for the proper gst bill with the supplier and without that bill we won't be considering the cost cost details of your implement so whatever you are doing make sure to have proper bills and uh, the bending one so bending is also easy as soon as you get the flat sheet pattern cut it from the laser you can simply the dimension which we were providing so with the help of those dimension they they usually set this check like uh, for the distance from where they have to bend it so they simply touch that surface and you can see how the bending took place so this is not only useful from your uh, event point of view but if you are opting for any of the company where you would like to work as a design engineer you should be having all the manufacturing knowledge it's not only about the cad which you will be preparing all right so uh, that's it from my side i am open to question if you don't have any question i'll request uh, nihal if you are there uh, so nihal is the team member of uh, last year winning team and he had some experiences which he would like to share uh, with you all so aisha if you can uh, unmute nihal asati Nihal, we are not able to hear you. Now? Yes, now we can. Yeah. Yep. 
yes actually it is directly muted so once again congratulations to whole team and good afternoon and close to good evening so it's like uh, we have experience uh, from last two tefan uh, like tefan 2022 and tefan 2023 and we have observed lot of challenges when we are going from this qualifying to the physical round and uh, when we are going for manufacturing processes we don't have that much of idea that okay this is the process how we can use it like uh, dharman mentioned about laser cutting bending processes uh, they are there but we don't have actual documentation so we can't utilize uh, that much of uh, resources and lot of wastage is there and uh, as we are from student side lot of funding challenges are also there so if we are wasting our uh, like raw material and our uh, time in that uh, unwanted things it is not good so I, i have just some point to discuss and i will share my screen let me know once you can see and if anyone have any question they can put in chat box we can discuss and if not i will try to uh, answer it after this session also so just i will share let me know when you can see so so is my screen visible hello yes yes okay okay so uh, these are some key points yes yeah, so so this is just uh, first important point that we need to understand is list of material and equipment make clear list of the material like you need some bending equipments you need some welding machines you need tector for your operations for your testing for attachment or shifting of your materials you will need some kind of primary resources like a place where you will uh, start building your prototype it must be finalized before starting building your proto otherwise what will happen lot of wastage of time and uh, we did not get we are to keep the things and we are they are kept two months before because being a student uh, we always work like uh, one day we work and after one week we are coming and uh, if 25 members are there uh, on the first day someone else is there or on uh, one week later someone else is there so it is uh, like communication gap and we are mismanaging that resources and uh, if you have proper list that okay these are the materials and these are the equipments like it may be electrical it may be a mechanical part gear shaft anything this all will be important for you and you must have proper list that okay this much of material i need this is a kind of funding you will be uh, like taking from your college or somewhere from your sources so you will have a proper plan for it and your team will have good confidence over your project otherwise uh, you will start initially in your excitement okay i have started uh, the model and we have that model and we are uh, creating a proto from that and uh, base is created now you get stopped but if you will have a proper plan proper equipment arrangement tractor fields and proper place to work what else is required you can do it but uh, the proper uh, and uh, the well maintained uh, facilities with material is required that is to be planned at the first stage and uh, cad modeling as mentioned from dharman like uh, the assembly levels pavement levels you need to mark it properly otherwise uh, if you directly extrude the model it will be difficult to create uh, from laser or bending operations or some other operations that you can directly procure from external sources and it can save your time as well as money because uh, both the factors are important because com- this is a competition you need to follow that time series and uh, when we come to teamwork that is my third point and it is the most important because uh, you have your team you have 25 members you have divided into marketing finance or uh, something like physical proto build manufacturing team design team so there must be a collaboration among these teams because if design team have worked on some kind of uh, design they have the knowledge that what is their idea behind that design and if manufacturing team is doing in practical way they must have proper communication otherwise what will happen they will miss the important points and uh, they need to work again and again and it will waste your time and uh, money is uh, getting wasted with no use 
so this is the important point that teamwork with time management and uh, funds management that i mentioned in first that you are uh, you must having a list that okay this much of material like bolts bending machines and uh, uh, sheet metals castings are required from your side so this much of funding maybe 3 lakhs 2 lakhs something like that you will be needing so marketing team must have good uh, hand over that how much of financing we need to take from our uh, external sources or maybe from college or any other source that you have that is on you but uh, management should be there if you will start then you should work continuously otherwise you will start for the first 15 days then you will get stopped and take some funding and in meantime you forget what we are designing and how we are manufacturing so it will be a lag and you need to source something like uh, robotic materials from far away distances because uh, in india when you go to the local market these all are the practical challenges that we feel so i am just sharing that not on any specific technical aspect so when you go in uh, market and you talk about any electronic items you do not get any specific uh, company or any specific supplier for that let's simple example of uh, uv rays sensors or uh, any ultrasonic sensors or uh, uh, different sensors are there when you go to marketplace uh, you will not get any specific company or reliable source of that supply so if you have proper arrangement of funds and proper uh, sourcing you can save your time and uh, deliver your projects and proto on time and uh, last is most important that uh, is safety if you are working on any operations like laser bending grinding or last final placing sheet metal bolting or something because it is like being more than 400 kg and you are working on it and uh, it is kept at some place and if and it should not be there but if an accident is there it is not a good memory for you because this event is like uh, from our heart we are working from our heart and making some proto and if any injury to any one of our team member it will not be a good sign so be adhered to safety for building for cutting or some any other operation you are doing in your proto or in your machine be adhered to safety and if any challenge is there discuss with your team don't take any decision directly otherwise what will happen you will take the decision in the night and in morning if other team members come they say oh no this is not required so then it all will be a waste of time and you're referred so work with your team combination adhere to safety manage funds have proper seat of plans that what you need to do at which time and then start uh, making your proto with the proper CAD modeling as mentioned by Dharman. These all are important points. And if any problem is there, challenge is there, we are always there to support you. You can uh, have question with us or organizing committee. We will be there. So thank you. If any question, I'm there. Hello. Yes, Nihal. Yeah, hey. thank you, Nihal, for sharing your experience. So I think uh, uh, we are on time and uh, if there are no questions, we are good to conclude now. Praveen, Vignesh, anything from your side? I think uh, oh. Praveen, you are muted. Oh. Or... I am both. This muted. So, Aisha, uh, you can stop the recording now and uh, we can sure. conclude the session soon. Okay. All the best teams uh, for the next steps. Uh, be very careful.